Hey there, everybody. Hope you guys are having a good day, afternoon, morning, whatever time you're watching this, whenever you're watching this. Um, after I do this one, even in the comments section, whether you're on TikTok, which I'm not really looking at right now, uh, or YouTube, uh, if this is something that you guys want me to roll over to the podcast, uh, let me know because I could do it immediately afterwards. So if you're trying to listen to it or watch it during the commute home or whatever, we can do that. So, you know, just let me know and we can do it like right after we come off of this. So we have a lot of things to talk about, um, but before we do, obviously we have to go through and do some shameless promotion. So first thing I want to say is if you aren't following on either TikTok or YouTube, because I'm really trying to grow that YouTube presence, definitely make sure to smash that follow button, that subscribe button. Um, I don't know exactly what joining the YouTube family is, but Pascal talks about it. So I'm going to say there's something smash to do that or whatever. The other things that I want to talk about before we get into the topics that y'all really want to hear about is this. So hold on, let me get that pulled up here. Last night we did a live on DV Cooper here on YouTube. If you did not watch that, you definitely want to. That's already been uploaded as a podcast as well on 50 Words for Murder, uh, which you can get to by going to justinontiktok.com, scrolling down till you see it and clicking on it incredibly fascinating if you don't know if you know this case you already know how interesting it is if you don't know this case then you need to so just saying the next thing that i want to talk about because apparently i'm very bad at promoting okay i have a podcast which i just mentioned it is called 50 words for murder i told you how to get to it um i've started to take these interviews and move them over so i know that sometimes people don't have time to wait an hour hour and a half two hours to listen to this but you can do it while you're on the go so definitely to keep that in mind. The other things that I'm really, really excited to mention to you guys, I've been very excited about this one. Um, a lot of y'all know that I have this book, Boundaries. And Boundaries, if you haven't picked it up already, if you have kids, you're no contact with a family member, which is 26%, by the way, of millennials and Gen Z are no contact with a parent. But any family member, this is a way to explain it to your kids in a way that is easy for them to understand. Um, why you're no contact that doesn't vilify the person and then goes on to teaching the importance of boundaries, uh, which is something that every kid should know and something that most of us weren't allowed to have. And then lastly, before we get into it, what I'm really super excited is that I did not expect to have these early. If you've been in some of my lives, you've already seen this, but the second book, Surprises Are Okay, Secrets Are Not, is now available. And you can... Uh, pick it up again by going to justinontiktok.com or through the TikTok shop. And yeah, what this book is supposed to do, and I'll show you actually. Let me show you real quick. It's not reading comments while I talk. It distracts me. So the goal of this book is to basically show your kids that they should be keeping secrets, particularly from adults. That's one of the points I drive home. But the secret in the book is pretty tame um, because it's not my job, you know, as the author to go into the discussions that you want to have with your kid. But at the very end of the book, I created a question that creates dialogue with your kid. And that question is, can you think of some things that you should tell a trusted grown up, even if someone asked you to keep it a secret? And when I asked my four year old this question, we had like a 30 minute conversation about it. Um, and then here on this side, it gives about 10 examples, fairly generic. So again, you can go in as deep as you want to or not. Things like, you know, tell a trusted adult if someone is being mean or hurting you. If you see someone being mean to others, like bullying, if someone makes you feel scared or not safe, Someone tries to make you do something you don't want to do, and you can go into how deep you want. So um, really try to make this a good resource for parents because, look, I cover a lot of true crime. And, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, tools like this are what will help keep children safe by being able to be confident in their voice, to speak up, knowing that they have a trusted adult that can help. That's the goal of it. OK, so. With that said, one of the things that we're going to talk about today are Seth Rogers. We're going to talk about Caleb Harris uh, and a few other things. But before we do, let me bring up something that I'm going to make y'all watch first because we have another missing person. Okay. Her name is Alexandria Chapman. She is from Germantown, Tennessee. Let's see if I can make that bigger here. Ah, there we go. She's from Germantown, Tennessee. This was uh, yesterday. The TBI issued an endangered child alert. 
She was last seen on April 12th, around 3 p.m. at the 7600 block of Poplar Pike, which is near South Germantown Road, Germantown, Tennessee. Uh, Germantown, Tennessee is a very, very nice, very, very safe area. She is, as you can see, a uh, black girl, four foot nine, about 100 pounds, light complexion, long dreadlocks. She was wearing a black hooded sweatshirt, black pants, white tennis shoes, clear frame glasses. And her family is worried for her safety. And it took them three days for them to issue the endangered child alert, which I notice it seems to be a struggle for Tennessee to, to do this. So if you have any idea of where she might be, you know, please share her picture. I'll make sure to put the missing flyer on my Instagram and Twitter so anybody can grab it off there and save it. But, you know, save it everywhere, share it everywhere. Let's try to find this girl uh, and bring her home. So that's what we'll do. So just to let y'all know, it's another one in Tennessee. I know that there are more out there, but this one popped across my thing today. And it just really seems to be a lot, a lot in Tennessee, especially lately. So now let's talk about Seth. Okay, because I know y'all want to talk about him, Seth and Sebastian. Um, Seth is probably not going to be doing any interviews this week because he is exhausted. And I talked to him and he was getting ready to go do physical therapy. So I'm really glad that he's going to go do physical therapy. And I had a few questions for him because, you know, everything's going on about the polygraph. He did, you know, doze off during it. The man's not been sleeping. He was kind of telling me about the circumstances with the polygraph. Basically, that it was a very calm room. It was him and one other person. They kept it dark, tried to keep it calm. He's not been sleeping. He's also on some medications. And he just dozed off. A lot of people are saying that's an indication of guilt. And it's not. Okay. I, I will, like, be totally beside myself if something comes out of left field and, and Seth becomes a person of interest because he's the only one out there uh, looking for his kid. He's the only one searching. He's working tirelessly. And I think he gets a little bit of a pass. Plus he's got a rock solid alibi. You know, he works at a, at a prison, right? He works in corrections. So there's cameras on him all the time. So I, a lot of people are, are kind of attacking him on this attacking his background. And, and here's what I'll say. I'm not going to get in here and defend what people have done in the past. I'm not going to defend any type of negative behavior. But what I'll say is this, a lot of people have pasts. I think that every single one of us, if we were being honest, would be able to say, hey, there's some really shitty things we've done in life, right? At this point, that's irrelevant. This is a man who is missing his child. He is trying to find his child. He is the only one looking for Sebastian. So give him a break. There's a lot of things, like I said, going on the internet. A lot of things people have been talking about him. I really just don't want, want that to continue. So the next thing we talked about on the next thing that we talked about was the landfills. Uh, as a lot of y'all know, or maybe don't know, in Gallatin, the transfer station caught on fire, which is where apparently their trash went. I also don't think that I realized, maybe a lot of y'all did, but I didn't realize that when they searched the trash dump in Kentucky, that was actually a construction dump, not the normal trash dump landfill. So to my knowledge, they've never actually searched the area where the household trash went. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's catching on fire. It's, I'm not saying that it's related. I'm saying it's a very interesting coincidence. The other things that we talked about was there's a rumor that I've gotten a lot. Hey, does Chris have somebody in his family that works for the police station? And, and Seth said he believes it might be his sister. I think he said Melissa. Um, maybe. That's not confirmed. That's a maybe. I don't want us, any of us to get in trouble. It's all you know, alleged. But he did say something interesting, too. He said that when you typically call Sumner sheriffs, they keep normal business hours. So if you call at 6.20 a.m., you typically don't go through. You typically get routed somewhere else. So how did he get somebody to answer at the sheriff's office? That is just the question he posed to me. So you can you can take that for what it's worth. Now, at the same time, Seth is very, very frustrated because every time you turn around for an update, there is really no big update. Um, there's what's coming from Seth what we might hear if the Proudfoots make some kind of a statement. But from law enforcement, there's really not a lot going on. And really one of a couple things have happened, you've heard me talk about this before. Either the police know that there's not a concern. And 
as a community, we don't have to be worried, but remember Sebastian is in my community or there's somebody out there abducting children. Sebastian went out at night, was put out at night, whatever happened and he's gone. Somebody picked him up and something very likely nefarious happened to him at that point in time. But if that's the case and that's what they're thinking could have happened, because we're now like seven weeks in, then why isn't there being a statement to address our community, people like myself who have children to make sure that we're all safe. I just really feel that the communication on this has been poor. I feel like Seth feels that same way. We're not trying to, you know, dog the police. We appreciate what they're doing, obviously. Um, but with that said, Seth, about 12 o'clock last night, midnight, left at midnight, sent me a petition uh, where basically he wants the FBI to get involved and take lead on this case. So the FBI is already involved in this case, okay? Um, but they're not lead. They're assisting. They're acting as support. But he wants them to be lead on it. And so I'm going to share this with you all real quick. He has a petition. I can find what I did with it. There it is. Here you pull it up. Got this petition right here. It's on change.org. Now, the easiest way to get to this petition is by going to my website, which is justinontiktok.com. And I'll show you where it's located. I'll, in fact, I'm just going to take you right there and show you. Okay. So if you're here, this is the website. Okay. Let me scroll up. Sorry. This is what you're going to come in and see. All right. If you want to order a book, you can do it right here. Um, if you want to follow the podcast, you can do that right here. But keep going. And then right here, you can see get the FBI involved in the Seb Aston Rogers case. You can click on it. You can sign it. You can share it whatever the case is, but this is what he wants to do. He wants the FBI. You can see it started by Seth Rogers. We want the FBI to take over the investigation of the case of missing Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers from Sumner County Sheriff's Office. It has been 50 days since Sebastian has gone missing. No scent trail from dogs, no video footage of Sebastian leaving his mother's house, yet no criminal investigation at all by TBI or Sumner County Sheriff's Office. Sign this petition in person or use the QR code, or you can go here, obviously, and, and see it. They're up to 2,934 uh, signatures out of the 5,000, which is their goal. They're saying it's gain momentum. Momentum. I just refreshed. We got a couple more. So please take two seconds. Uh, if you're on TikTok, you can go to the link in my bio. If you're on YouTube, justinontiktok.com. Go sign this. Let's get him the signatures that he needs. Because at this point, I really feel we need an agency outside of the state of Tennessee taking lead and having point on this case. It's it's absurd that we are this many days in and there's absolutely zero evidence of anything. It makes no sense to me. So please give it a, you know, please give it a follow. The other thing a lot of y'all have been asking me is about the Katie Proudfoot interview that she was on On Patrol last night. Um, I didn't get a chance to watch it until about 20 minutes ago, give or take. And so, you know, let's just, let's just play it. Let's just play it. And hold on. Not the best volume here. If you're on TikTok, you're not going to be able to hear it. But that's okay. If you want to jump over to YouTube, you can. I'll turn up my volume here. So that y'all can see it. And I do want to give credit, though, first. This is from Red Rum Media. You can see her down there. You know, definitely give her a follow if you want to. I appreciate it. We're going to play it, though. What's the latest on the search? So law enforcement is exploring any and all possibilities. Um, they're communicating daily with us about updates and statuses. We, we have faith that all the law enforcement agencies involved are doing everything that they can. Um, and we're going to find Sebastian and bring him home. You know, the most important thing right now is to get the word out about I'm going to pause here real quick. At, um, and the reason why is I want to address something that she said. We're going to find Sebastian. I can rewind and show you all. How is she going to find Sebastian when she's not out searching? I mean, it's just a, it's a legit question. Like, how does she plan on finding him? Like showing up? I don't. Anyways, I just wanted to just want to point that little nuance nuance out. 
I think I'll play the rest of it. Wow, so interesting. What would you like our viewers to know about your son? Uh, Sebastian, he is a fine functioning autistic. Um, he loves the games. He loves video games. He loves fishing. Are you taking? I'm so hungry. <laughs> He's typically a very sweet boy. Um, he can be quite temperamental though if he's overstimulated or if he's stressed out. He has a unique run. He runs like the, the Naruto anime character. Uh, when he's when he's excited, he likes to, to dab and he loves music. He loves to dance. That's all very helpful information. Now, if Sebastian's out there watching, what would you like to say to your son? I would say, Bubba, we love you. We all love you so much. Um, wherever you are, just know that we are not going to stop. We're going to keep searching. We're going to find you. We're going to bring you home. And if you, if you ever get an opportunity, find the phone, find a safe adult, call 911. Um, but I'd also like to, to ask our community to please, please, please keep searching your properties. Keep sharing this flyer. Um, if you know something or you see something, please say something. Call the law enforcement immediately. Okay, I'm done listening to her. <laughs> um, those were for Crocodile, too. Maybe I'm just biased and maybe I'm jaded. But who is this we that she keeps talking about? Who is the we are going to keep searching? Because it sure as hell is not her or her husband. The, the emotion seemed like crocodile tears. It's just so... Uh, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. So anyways, it's very just challenging. It's challenging. So that's, that's basically the updates. Go sign this, the petition for him. That's really important. I just don't, okay, I'm not done. I'm not done. I just don't know how somebody has the audacity and the gall to go on TV, do a video, whatever she wants to do. Just like, you know, let me pull this garbage up. Paul, do I still have this saved? Oh, I do. I do. Let me pull this trash. No, nope, that wasn't it. Where is it? I'm right up. I'm going to pull this up real quick. Right after I did the interview with Seth. We had she did this. She posted this whole long rant about how Seth basically outed um, the essay that happened to him. Talking about the authority, so basically, there she confirmed what happened. But this whole thing is about attacking Seth. None of it has anything to do with finding her kid. And it's like she goes on this other thing and says, "Hey, we're looking for our kid." But you haven't been out once searching. You took the flyers off your car. You took the flyers off your RV. If you believe he's still out there, you wouldn't leave your home and go camping for an, you know, inordinate amount of time, you know, some unknown amount. It's just, I just don't understand as a parent how she is not tearing the world, the town upside down, looking for her kid unless she already knows where he is. I just don't see any other way of doing it again it's like i've made this comparison before it's, it's different but similar roberta laundry roberta laundry didn't go out and search until the day that that park reopened and even though law enforcement spent you know hundreds if not thousands of man hours and and, and tons of money looking for brian laundry she walks in in 45 minutes and finds him she's not upset she's not distraught and i'm not trying to like judge the way people grieve everybody grieves differently but she went to that park wearing black. She found it in 45 minutes. And this is kind of the, you know, she's not been out once. She's going out having Easter dinner and traveling. And I'm just, I'll, I'm going to stop. It's to me, Seth is the only one that I have seen searching. And by the way, searching is not happening today. I'm not sure if it will be again, additionally this week. Apparently they've had some issues um, with people searching, with people causing issues and drama and things like that. So he's kind of trying to, I guess get back to some kind of a baseline at this point. So that's kind of what's going on. So anyways, 
Very frustrating. Very frustrating. The next thing I want to talk about, and I don't have any screenshots to show you all on this one, so I'm just going to talk to you all, is, is Caitlin Harris. So I spoke with Tony Mathis today. And I was like, hey, it's been about a week since I talked to you. What's going on with Caleb Harris? And he told me some stuff, some stuff I'm able to talk about, some stuff I'm not. And, and unfortunately, there's not a lot of updates you know, as far as the search goes. But what I can tell you is I'm working with, um, with him and, and Randy Harris, Caleb Harris's dad, to – they want to do TikTok, not on YouTube. So I, if you watch on YouTube, don't worry. When we do the TikTok live, I will upload it to YouTube so you guys have access to it. But basically what's happening with him is that there hasn't been a lot of updates. Law enforcement does have some things that they're working on that could be very um, vital leads in the case that could lead to possible breakthroughs, but it's not at a point where you can really talk about what they are. Um, there's not currently a search going on in Corpus Christi because basically they've exhausted that area. There's not really anything left to search. So they're kind of trying to regroup in regard to that. But that's kind of what's going on with Caleb Harris. And, and the challenge with his case, and this is what I told Tony is, and this is unfortunate, is that in order for people to want to stay involved in the case, and look, a lot of y'all I know come in. I see it here. I see it on TikTok. Y'all come in and y'all say, hey, any updates on Caleb Harris? I see it all the time. So I so appreciate, I know the family appreciates y'all being engaged and um, wanting to help and asking for updates. But they feel like they've lost a lot of momentum in the last week because there really hasn't been that much to go on. And unlike, you know, Riley Strain, where you had a lot of video footage, and, and unlike Sebastian Rogers, where you don't have a lot of video footage, but you had some weird stuff going on with the Proud Puts, there really isn't anything like that. With I mean, other than the case itself just being weird, there really isn't anything like that going on with Caleb. But his case still deserves momentum. His family still deserves answers. He's still a missing person. Um, you know, and we're still looking for him. So again, stay tuned this week, probably this week, we're going to be talking about Caleb. We're going to have Tony on and give any updates that they are allowed to give. So that's what, that's what I'm going to say on that. I also, cause I'm seeing some of the comments here. There are some rumors going around about, okay, there's a lot of things about Caleb. Well, you know, how these cases go, there's always rumors going on about Reddit and a few other things. What I can tell you all at this point is I've seen these rumors. I've heard them at this point. They're all unsubstantiated. There's there's nothing that has come out from law enforcement or from the family or anybody that confirms that any of the rumors about Caleb or anything that's coming out or being said or any additional information, none of that is, is, is substantiated. It is all just that rumors at this point in time. So I just want to make sure y'all are aware of that. Although that's another very frustrating one because – Last time Randy was on here, they said that when they moved Caleb into the apartment that he was in, it was gated and there were cameras and lo and behold, none of them were working. So, which reminds me of something. I'm going to go back to Seth in a minute, but the cameras reminded me of something. So I'll talk about that in a second. So the next thing that I want to talk about, I wasn't really following this one so closely um, because I had been out of town, but I'm still going to talk about it because I think it's important. A lot of y'all are familiar with the the missing the two missing women in Oklahoma that were found Veronica Butler who was 27 Jillian Kelly who was 39 there were four people arrested I'm going to show you who they are in a second and they also have since found two bodies they've not I've not seen where they've officially identified them as Veronica and Jillian but I think that everything that's been implied shows that probably it's going to be them but at this point you have these four people who have been arrested in connection okay they are Tad Burt Cullum, who is 43, Tiffany uh, Michelle Adams, 54, Cole Earl Twombly, 50, and Cora Twombly, 44. They've been booked into Texas County Jail on counts of first-degree murder, kidnapping, and first-degree conspiracy to commit murder. They're just some fun-looking people right here. Um, so we are waiting to hear the updates on that, but kind of wanted to give you all just a real brief update because a lot of you all have been asking about that. So... Anyways, next thing that I want to talk about, and I will hear, okay, I wasn't going to talk about this anymore because this is somebody who I'm like, he's dead. Let's just forget him. And and surprisingly, when I've made videos about his, his death, and I'm sure a lot of y'all know who I'm talking about right now, 
when I made videos about his death. The comment section didn't go the way that I thought it would, oddly enough. But I'm going anyway, to let me show you. We, of course, are talking about O.J. Simpson. Okay. And here's why I'm showing this story. A lot of y'all know the story of O.J. Simpson, right? Y'all, you know, football player was arrested in the 90s after a, a trace in his Bronco for, for murder of, of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman. And he was acquitted of murder, but he was found guilty. Sorry, let me show you this. There you go. Found guilty in the civil suit where he basically was told libel um, for like $33.5 million. I think this was like in 1997. Okay. So now he's dead. He's never paid a dime of that money and he's kept his estate fairly secret. Now, I don't know how much money he's had. I know that they forced like the sale of his Heisman Trophy when he was alive. They forced the sale of some other things, um, which is part of how he paid. So we're supposed to pay some of the money. And again, he never paid a dime to these evictive states. So now the executor who was named in this was one of O.J. Simpson's long, his longtime attorney. And he is basically saying he's going to do everything to ensure that the Goldman, Goldman family gets absolutely nothing from O.J.'s estate. So I mean, I want to scroll down so I can read this exactly correct because it's, you know, legal stuff can be interesting. So. Apparently on January 24th, OJ signed the most recent copy of his will. And in that will, it reads that it would be administered as set forth herein without litigation or dispute of any kind. And if a beneficiary, and if a beneficiary heir or any other person seeks to set aside the administration of this will, have this will declared null, void, or diminish, or to defeat any change, any part of the provision of this will that they'd received free of trust, one dollar and no more in lieu of any claimed interest in this will or its assets. Now, in Las Vegas, it has all of his stuff has to go through probate. Basically, what this will is saying, the way that it was written, is that we're going to pay you or leave what we want to leave to who we want to leave it to, and if you challenge this will, you're not getting anything. And so, it's going to be very interesting to see how this holds up in court because with the interest accrued over all of these years. It's now, it was 33 and a half million in 1997 with all the interest that is now over a hundred million dollars that's owed. Now, I don't think that any part of OJ's estate has anywhere near a hundred million dollars, but one of the things that this attorney said was he died without penance. Hold a second here. He did not want to give a dime and nickel to Fred Goldman. Never anything. Never. Okay. So they plan on taking that very seriously and fighting it. It's just, you know, y'all, you know, guys, just take whatever you want from that. I'll put his face up here. The only positive thing that I can say about this man is that he was a good football player in the 70s. So we're going to see what happens with this. They're going to try to fight it and not give them a single dime. I don't think that's going to work out well for them. Especially when you have articles like this, where you have the executor and, and you know, the attorney saying, hey, I don't think that they need to, re I'm, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you don't receive a dime. It just seems, it seems petty. It doesn't seem professional, I guess. It seems like you're, it's just like you're doing it out of hurt and out of malice. And I really don't understand why on that so that's basically what we have going on with all of this stuff today and there is more stuff i was actually going to talk about a few more things but then i'm like well youtube if i talk about certain things can be very challenging but i will tell you that in the last i'll just show you all some i mean i'll talk about this one i'm gonna pull this one up and i think i can keep this pg i can keep it on pg let y'all read this. Have y'all seen this one yet? This one's just kind of funny. It's not funny, haha, but it's kind of funny. With a married teacher that was caught with a a student in her car at like three in the morning. Apparently, what happened? This was in Nebraska. By the way, I'm wearing my I love Nebraska shirt today that one of my lovely followers sent me.
because if you all send me something, I will definitely wear it. The more, as long as it's screen appropriate, if it's not screen appropriate, I won't wear it, but I will wear the most ridiculous stuff. Anyways, apparently she was married in their SUV, parked at the end of a road. Somebody called the police around 3 a.m. about this car being there. Police approached it. They got in the front seat, unclothed, and ran, crashed. The kid, the, the student ran out completely unclothed. And she was, anyway, she got, she admitted to being guilty. And, she, yeah, no, this is what happened. It's just not funny, but funny. Not funny, but funny. Anyway, so I was going to talk about that one. The other three are definitely not. Now, I did learn right before I got on here. I did not have a chance to to do any research on this, so I will tell you that it's coming up. Apparently, in the last week, two weeks, up to a couple days ago, there's a little bit of – there's. I'm not going to say there's movement, but what I'm going to say is that there are headlines and news stories in regard to Madeline McCann. Uh, that's one of those, you know – very well known, very famous cases, cold cases that's been going on for what that one's 20 years old plus. So, anyways, hopefully, we'll have some answers for that. And I can give you some answers either later today on TikTok, or I'll come back tomorrow, or even do a short on here on YouTube. So, I think that's pretty much all I got for today, guys. Uh, I do have Jennifer Santinello this evening at nine o'clock. Somebody did remind me I didn't want to speak about the cameras. I did want to speak about the cameras. Going back to Seth for a second, Seth Rogers, Sebastian Rogers. And by the way, if you're coming in late and you missed that, the glorious thing about YouTube is you can go scroll up all the way back to the beginning and you can watch it in its entirety. So if you're coming in late, um, definitely feel free to do that. But one thing that I want to come back on and talk about is in Hendersonville, there is there we have license plate readers everywhere. Like there was recently, like right after Seth or sorry, Sebastian went missing, there was a fugitive from Kentucky that was at Costco. And because of license plate readers, they were able to find out where he was very quickly. And they swarmed on him while he was at the food court in Costco. This was like a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago. So we have license plate readers all over the place. This is like not a town you want to commit something in. I mean, even my neighborhood has license plate readers. So I'm really not sure why none of that has been pulled either to see what was kind of going around in that area, because I know that around the schools and stuff, they're going to have them. So I'm just letting y'all know mainly that that's something that exists in, in Hendersonville specifically. Uh, I'm glad somebody reminded me that the other thing that I, I wanted to talk about real quick was Riley Strain. Uh, I don't really have an update for him, but what I want to share is this. I reached out to Chris Dingman. Um, I will probably be getting Chris on a call or a, a, a YouTube, hopefully, interview here very soon. And one thing that I do want to do, and I want you all to stay tuned for this, is, you know, this is going to be Michelle's first Mother's Day without her son. And so I've gotten information. I'm not ready to post it yet, but I've gotten information on where... You can order flowers or gifts or whatever if you want to send them to her or cards or whatever um, to a flower shop. You can say who it's for and they'll they'll make sure it's delivered. So I'm trying to get that set up for not only Riley's mom, but also if you were here a few weeks ago or a couple of weeks ago where we talked to Eric Oaks, who was the father of Adam Oaks, who was a Delta Chi, same, same fraternity, not same chapter, but same fraternity as Riley Strain. Uh, was killed as a pledge on his first night as a pledge. His brothers killed him. Uh, she doesn't, she doesn't get flowers or anything for mother's day either. That was their only child. He was their miracle baby. So I want to try to set up something nice for them as well. So since mother day is coming up, please um, stay tuned for that this week. It's something that I plan to hopefully have all that information for to be able to give you guys that. So with all that said, um, I'll try to do some recaps on some of this stuff on TikTok and shorter videos, but I appreciate y'all watching. If you are first time on YouTube or even on TikTok, definitely make sure to hit that follow button, hit that subscribe, and look, we got a new member. I'm going to try something real quick because I got this new, this new thing. So I'm going to appreciate this, and we're going to do – hold on. Look at this. I can do – 
Apparently it's not doing anything. Hold on. There so there we go. I'm trying to be like Pascal, guys. So thank you for that, Della. Becoming a new member. And I will see you guys all later. Again, tonight is going to be Jennifer Santanello. If you don't know about that case, it is another person in Tennessee who's been missing and is getting absolutely no, no help from the police department, at least not in my opinion. So I will see you guys a little bit later. Y'all have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.